Dislocation of Hip Introduction Hip dislocations are serious injuries that often occur due to high-energy trauma, such as sports-related accidents or vehicle collisions. While the hip joint is generally stable, it takes a substantial impact to dislocate it. Types of Hip Dislocation Hip dislocations can be categorized into three main types, each characterized by the direction in which the femoral head is displaced. Among the different types of hip dislocations, posterior dislocations are the most common, comprising approximately 90% of all cases. The first type is anterior hip dislocations, where the femoral head is displaced forward. Within this category, there are different subtypes based on the specific direction of displacement. Obturator dislocations involve displacement towards the obturator foramen. Pubic dislocations involve displacement towards the pubis. And perennial dislocations involve displacement towards the perineum. It's an area between the anus and scrotum or vulva. The second type is posterior hip dislocations which are more common and involve displacement of the femoral head backward towards the back of the body. Like anterior dislocations, there are subtypes based on the direction of displacement. Gluteal dislocations involve displacement towards the gluteal region. Sciatic dislocations involve displacement along the path of the sciatic nerve. And ileal dislocations involve displacement towards the ilium. The third type is central hip dislocations, also known as fractured dislocations. This is a severe form of dislocation where the femoral head not only becomes dislocated, but also penetrates the medial wall of the acetabulum and is displaced into the pelvic cavity. This type often leads to joint stiffness and the development of osteoarthritis over time. Anterior hip dislocation. It's a relatively uncommon type of hip dislocation, accounting for approximately 10% of all cases. Etiology. It occurs when there is a direct blow to the posterior hip or when the leg is forcibly abducted. Clinical features. The clinical features depend on the direction of the dislocation, which can be either superior or inferior. In superior dislocations, the hip is typically extended and externally rotated. On the other hand, inferior dislocations cause the hip to be flexed and externally rotated. Complications Complications associated with anterior hip dislocation include the risk of femoral nerve injury. The femoral nerve is located close to the anterior aspect of the hip joint, and damage to this nerve can result in symptoms such as numbness, tingling, or weakness in the lower limb. Additionally, like all hip dislocations, there are potential complications, such as a vascular necrosis, post-traumatic arthritis, and an increased risk of future dislocations. Posterior hip dislocation. It's the most common type of hip dislocation, accounting for approximately 90% of all cases. Etiology. It's often caused by a dashboard injury which occurs when a force is applied to the knee of a flexed, adducted, and internally rotated hip, such as in a motor vehicle accident where the knee strikes the dashboard. Classification of Posterior Hip Dislocation Posterior hip dislocations can be classified using different systems to better understand the severity and associated injuries. Two commonly used classification systems are the Thompson-Epstein classification and the Stewart and Milford classification. The Thompson-Epstein classification categorizes posterior hip dislocations based on radiographic findings into five types. Type 1 involves dislocation without significant fractures or with minor fractures. Type 2 includes dislocation with a single large fracture of the posterior acetabular rim. Type 3 consists of dislocation combined with a comminuted fracture, a break or splinter of the bone into more than two fragments, of the rim of the acetabulum, which may or may not have significant fragments. Type 4 comprises dislocation accompanied by a fracture of the acetabulum's floor. Type 5 involves dislocation along with a femoral head fracture. The Stewart and Milford classification, on the other hand, classifies as posterior hip dislocations 
based on functional hip stability. Type 1 represents dislocation without a fracture or with an insignificant fracture. Type 2 includes dislocation with a posterior wall fracture, either single or comminuted, but the hip remains functionally stable. Type 3 indicates dislocation associated with gross instability of the hip joint due to loss of structural support. Type 4 consists of dislocation with a concurrent femoral head fracture. Clinical features Clinical features of posterior hip dislocation include severe hip pain that can radiate to the knee. The affected leg often appears shortened, and the hip is typically internally rotated and adducted. Radiological features of posterior hip dislocations. The following key indicators can be observed in the radiographic images. Displacement of femoral head. In a posterior hip dislocation, the femoral head is visibly displaced posteriorly, indicating that it has moved out of its normal position within the acetabulum. Altered thigh position. Posterior dislocation often results in an internally rotated thigh appearance. This means that the thigh bone appears to be rotated inwardly compared to its usual alignment. Absence of lesser trochanter. Due to the internal rotation of the femur, the lesser trochanter may not be visible on the radiograph. Disruption of Shinton's line. Shinton's line is a smooth curve seen in X-ray images that extends from the top of the obturator foramen to the inferior edge of the neck of the femur. In a posterior hip dislocation, this line may be disrupted or broken, indicating a misalignment of the hip joint. Complications One of the potential complications of posterior hip dislocation is sciatic nerve injury, particularly injury to the perennial branch of the sciatic nerve. This can result in symptoms such as numbness, tingling, or weakness in the affected lower limb. Associated Injuries Hip dislocations are frequently associated with other significant injuries that occur concurrently. Some of the common accompanying injuries include acetabular fractures. These fractures involve the socket part of the hip joint. They often occur due to the same forces that lead to hip dislocation and can complicate the treatment and recovery. Femoral head fractures. Although less common than acetabular fractures, fractures of the ball part of the hip joint, femoral head, can occur alongside hip dislocations. These fractures can contribute to long-term complications, such as a vascular necrosis. Central fracture, dislocation of the hip. It's a serious and debilitating injury characterized by the penetration of the femoral head through the medial wall of the acetabulum with the potential of entering the pelvic cavity. The degree of displacement can vary, and in severe cases, the entire femoral head may be located within the pelvis. This injury significantly disrupts the alignment and congruity of the hip joint, resulting in joint stiffness and the development of osteoarthritis over time. Management Anterior Hip Dislocation Aulis's Method It's a technique used to reduce an anterior hip dislocation by applying traction and manipulating the dislocated joint. Reverse Bigelow's Method Posterior hip dislocation. Aulis's method. Posterior hip dislocation can be effectively treated using a technique called the Aulis's method. This method involves a series of steps to reduce the dislocation and restore the hip joint to its proper position. Bigelow's method. It's an effective technique used to manage posterior hip dislocations. This approach involves a circumductory manipulation method that aims to reposition the dislocated hip joint back into the acetabulum. Stimson's method. It's a technique that can be utilized to manage posterior hip dislocation. This method offers a less invasive approach to reduction by utilizing the force of gravity. This method is named after Lewis Atterbury Stimson, an American orthopedic surgeon, and it's more commonly associated with shoulder dislocations but it can also be adapted for posterior hip dislocations. Note. In cases of hip dislocations, the stability of the joint is heavily reliant on the iliofemoral ligament, commonly referred to as the Y ligament of Bigelow. If this ligament is torn, it can lead to an irregular dislocation 
which presents additional challenges in the reduction process due to the increased instability. Complications of hip dislocations Hip dislocations can give rise to several serious complications that require careful management and monitoring. These complications include avascular necrosis. It is also known as osteonecrosis and can occur when the blood supply to the femoral head is disrupted during the dislocation. This leads to the death of bone tissue, necrosis, which can result in pain and limited mobility. Over time, the necrotic bone may collapse, further impacting joint function. Neurovascular compromise. A sciatic nerve, which is in close proximity to the hip joint, can be injured during a hip dislocation. This can lead to sensory changes, such as numbness or tingling, as well as weakness in the lower limb. Severe or prolonged nerve damage can result in permanent disability. Post-traumatic arthritis. The initial injury and the subsequent healing process can lead to changes in the joint surface and alignment. These alterations can accelerate joint degeneration and contribute to the development of arthritis. Recurrent dislocation. Once a hip dislocation has occurred, the structures responsible for stabilizing the hip joint can be weakened. This increases the risk of future dislocations, even from minor injuries or movements. Each subsequent dislocation further damages the joint and elevates the likelihood of long-term complications. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.